Linear regression assumes relationships between the dependent variable and the independent variables are linear, or can at least be approximated linearly. But not all relationships are linear. We can capture nonlinear relationships within a linear regression model framework by transforming variables. And I've listed a few such transformations here. A quadratic transformation is appropriate when the slope changes in magnitude as well as in sign. The scatter plots shown with their trend lines show how a quadratic transformation may better suit the data than a linear approach might. The transformation is on our second independent variable. We see it raised to the second power. We can still use ordinary least squares to find the sample regression equation, but it influences our interpretation of the model. We use the adjusted R-squared to compare linear and quadratic models to each other. We are also able to find where our estimated value of y reaches a maximum or a minimum at using this equation for x uh, minus the coefficient for b1 divided by 2 times the coefficient b2. And this can come in handy in a variety of different circumstances. And one of those examples will be illustrated. So let's consider an example using the wages data from the Chapter 7 data file. Let's try to predict wage using education and age and answer some of these important questions. So here we have a scatter plot of wage and age. And we can see both the linear trend line as well as the quadratic trend line. You can think for yourself to decide which one seems like it is a better fit. And if you want to generate a scatter plot in R, we can do that using the plot function. And here in our plot window, we can see that plot and it looks very similar to what was shown in the slide. So take a moment to think about whether or not this looks more linear or more quadratic. Or are you unsure? It's okay to be unsure because we can continue to investigate this relationship further. So here are the results of the linear regression model and the quadratic regression model where we add a component that is raised to the second power. So if we're still unsure after looking at that scatter plot, we can try running models with both specifications. So let's try to estimate wage using education and age. And first we'll try it without any transformations, and then we'll raise age to the second power. So model one is going to be wage. So we're predicting wage using education and age. 
using the wages data set. So we've created that object. Now to create the variable raised to the second power, we're going to create a new object. So wages, because it's going to be in the wages data set. I'm going to call it age two. And we're going to use the age variable in the wages data set and raise it to the second power. So now we have four variables in the wages data set, wage, education, age, and age two, age two being age raised to the second power. And now we can add that to our model. I'm gonna call this one model two. And now I'm going to use the stargazer package to compare the results of the models side by side. If you do not have the stargazer package, you can uh, use install.packages and then stargazer. So to use it, I have to add it to my working library, basically activating the stargazer programmer package. And I can use the function stargazer, model one, model two, and the type is going to be text. So here we can see the results of our two models. Uh, we can see the information about our individual coefficients as well as our constant, and we can compare our observations, R squared, adjusted R squared, because this is a multiple linear regression model, both of them are, we want to look at the adjusted R squared. And here we see that our second model where we take the, uh, where we raise age to the second power, that adjusted R squared is substantially better. We find that in both scenarios, the overall model is significant by looking at the F statistic, but the second model, the F statistic is much larger uh, so that's a good sign that that model is a better fit. So we can be fairly confident that adding in that quadratic makes sense for our model. And then those results are indicated again on this table just demonstrated a little bit differently. So to estimate wages for different values of education and age, we can plug them into the model like with any other regression model. And how to go about doing that is illustrated on the slide. And then the last question we had to answer was what age do we have the maximum earnings? And to do this, we employ that equation I mentioned earlier and plug in the coefficients we now have for B1 and B2, and we see what happens. I've also included a visual of the shape of the curve so you can really see that maximum point. So try out some quadratics and see what you discover. I'll catch you next time.